Hello snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host Avon Lefebvre and in this video we'll be reviewing the new Raygun Pop. That's right, they took the Raygun, gave it a new shape and added camber to it. The board is available in 150, 153, 156, 159, 162, 157 wide, 160 wide, and 164 wide. This board features K2's directional camber baseline, which is just directional camber, meaning that it's set back just a hair. Nothing more to it, traditional camber. You're gonna get snap and pop with it, and that's it. I rode this board at Arapahoe Basin in the spring. It was sunny bluebird, warmer temps. You had chunder snow, slushy snow, and everything kind of in between. And I rode it with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my K2 Indy bindings. All right, so this board comes in just below a middle of the road all mountain flex. What you have is way more flex or at the sweet spot in the nose and the tail. Then it progressively stiffens up through the middle with a lot of torsional flex. This board is very playful and very lively, which means it's not the most stable. At speeds, you're gonna see those tips just flapping and all that energy is gonna resonate back underfoot. Basically, you feel everything with this board when you charge or if you're just being slow. So just be prepared for your knees to take the abuse. So adding camber to this board obviously gives it more pop. It's an easy to engage camber profile due to the flex, but there's a lot of rebound out of it, which is surprising because it's a soft flexing board. Now, is it the snappiest board out there? No, but is it solid? Yes, and it's easy to engage. You don't really have to fight it. It's gonna rebound and pop off anything in its pad. When it comes to jumps, you wanna keep it to small and medium sized things. It might be able to handle bigger stuff if you know what you're doing, but if you know what you're doing, there's other boards in the K2 lineup that you should actually be looking at instead of this. I honestly didn't get to hit anything too big because it's the spring park at the basin, so you know, the biggest jump they have is maybe 15 feet, and that's kind of what I hit. When it comes to buttering on this board, the tips are playful. It's very easy to engage, but you do have rebound in it due to that camber profile. You're going to feel it. You just want to pop out of anything that you try. So if you're sideways and you want to spring out of it, go for it. You're doing a tail butter and then you're rotating around, you're going to feel that spring. The same can be said about jibbing. There's a huge sweet spot in the nose and tail that locks and depresses, but it still retains that pop out of the feature. And having camber through the midsection, it really hugs the rail or whatever kind of feature you're on and just lets you slide with it. So this board actually rips a solid carb for the most part. You can overpower it, and I definitely did, but it takes about one lap on it to realize where the limit is and to just know that you can't fully be aggressive with it. Short, tight, quick turns, fun, long, hard, drawn out ones. Yeah, it'll do them, even Euro carbs. Just remember, there is a limit on this board. It's quick and nimble edge to edge. That torsional flex matches up perfectly to allow you just to steer it with your feet however you want. Who's this board for? The progressing intermediate rider that's gonna hit the whole mount. So I've always been a personal fan of the Raygun. It's one of those boards you can pretty much put anyone on, not really have to worry about it. They're always gonna have fun. It's just a board you can go out and get anything done with. This board is exactly the same, but with more pop. You got camber, which just kind of changes a few attributes with it. It's a little more snappy. You know, you can drive into it a little more aggressive than say the regular counterpart. But overall, it's just a solid, solid board. Comparable boards, the Ride Algorithm, the Yes Libre, the Nidecker Merc. This has been my review of the K2 Raygun Pop. Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the content we've got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you'd really like to support us and you want to see us just grow out what we're trying to do over here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a whole video over there that explains it better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.